apologetic discussions straight to your ears. I'm your co-host, John McCaskill. Now, normally we pride ourselves on being that live show, that raw, uncut, and unapologetically real with you all. However, the universe had different plans for us today, leading to us pre-recording this episode. Yet, there is a silver lining to this. It means we've had a chance to sift through and polish this episode to bring you the golden nuggets, the real essence of our conversation. Because we did have some video and audio glitches, and hey, that's just life. And we wholeheartedly believe that what has emerged from the editing room is something truly special, something potent and still very much in the spirit of men talking mindfulness. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive deep with us into a conversation that remains authentic and grounded in mindfulness, even through the hiccups and the hurdles. It's an adventure with golden nuggets of wisdom waiting to be discovered. and We are thrilled to have you embark on this journey with us. Thank you for being here with us, for your understanding, and for your commitment to growing alongside us episode by episode. Let's jump in. Raw, uncut, and unapologetic. Welcome to Men Talking Mindfulness with your hosts, John McCaskill and Will Schneider. Here we focus on helping men and those with men in their lives solve some of life's complex challenges through understanding the practices of mindfulness and how they can help. Each episode is in an environment free of judgment and criticism, with a focus on authenticity and inner peace. Let's dig in. When that asteroid struck 65 million years ago, the sun may have been blotted out, but that doesn't mean it wasn't still there. The dinosaurs just couldn't see it or feel it. The same is true for whatever cataclysmic or seismic tremors have happened in your life to create clouds of dust and debris that that may have obscured your path to this point. They have covered up the road to genuine joy, but that doesn't mean that that road still isn't there. We were designed to create and created to be happy. It's our nature. It just gets covered up by the fog of the stress. And once we're able to clear that away, the dark clouds, debris left by the asteroids, earthquakes, and volcanoes of our past, we can see the clear blue skies above and feel the bright, warming sun that never really left us. This is a quote from the book that we are going to break down today, The Code to Joy, The Four-Step Solution to Unlock Your Natural State of Happiness. There it is. All right. Thank you, John. Today, we are joined by one of the co-authors of this best-selling book right there, Dr. George Pratt, and the other co-author, Dr. Peter Lambro, was unable to join us. Welcome to another episode of Men Talking Mindfulness, everybody. This podcast is co-hosted by John McCaskill over there in a blue shirt and me, Will Schneider, in a blue shirt, in a blue shirt. Thank you, Dr. Pratt. He's wearing blue as well. So it's like we're actually going we're to be personifying the blue sky today. That's right. <laughs> so I got to be honest. When I first heard the title of this book, I was very suspicious, thinking, is there really a code to joy? Humans are so complex. How can they make it sound so simple? Well, my suspicions were very quickly cleared up as I dove into this great book, backed by science, research, and years of experience as clinical psychologists. There really is a code to joy. And we're going to learn about that today as we examine what is the fog of the stress and how it gets in the way of our happiness. How does the stress, and I think we can call them micro traumas, we'll we'll talk about that in a second, Dr. George, from our childhood manifest in our adult lives. What are the seven most common limiting beliefs that we experience? The four steps of the code to joy and closing with the five steps, five paths to a rich life. And... Stay tuned until the end of this episode as Dr. George is going to lead us through a very simple and powerful breathing practice from the book called Crosshand Breathing. Just a little bit more about Dr. George. He is a licensed clinical psychologist with a private practice in La Jolla, California, as a motorcycle goes by in New York City, where he specializes in psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, mind-body techniques, and performance enhancement for over 30 years. Over the years, Dr. Pratt has served as a chairman, a diplomat, and a consultant to various mental health organizations, and you might have seen him on TV as he has been a repeated guest on Larry King Live. Dr. George, thank you. for We're honored to have you joining us today. Thank you for being here. And to all your listeners out there, 
get ready for another fun and enlightening episode of Men Talking Mindfulness. Thank you all for being here, for tuning in, for sharing our podcast, for helping us grow, and for becoming more mindful. Well, let's begin, everyone. John, in the other blue shirt, great to see you. What's next? Hey, good to see you, Will. It's good to see you, Dr. Pratt. Thank you so much for joining us. I actually don't have a whole lot to add this morning, aside from just real quick uh, announcement that our merch store is open. Our merchandise store is open at mentalkingmindfulness.com forward slash shop. And if you would, follow us on all social media. Check us out at Men Talking Mindfulness. And then I will jump into our initial grounding practice. And then we're going to get into this amazing conversation with Dr. Pratt. So that's it. For us, the three of us here, and for our audience who is watching later, please get comfortable, whatever that looks like and feels like for you, and just bring your attention to your breath, the physical aspects of your breath, noticing the rise and fall of your chest and belly as you breathe in and as you breathe out, noticing how the air feels as you breathe in and how it feels as you breathe out. Imagining that air going down into your lungs as you inhale, filling all the way up. Hold for a second. And now imagine the air as it comes up from the lungs and out through your mouth as you breathe out. And one more deep breath in, filling all the way up from the bottom to the top. Hold at the top and release. And as you release, start to bring some movement into your body, maybe rolling your shoulders, moving your head around in circles, wiggling your fingers and your toes. And ladies and gentlemen, now let's get into this conversation with Dr. George. Dr. George, again, thank you so much for being here with us today. We'll jump in the first question, a foundational question that I'm sure you've answered many times. What inspired you to write Code to Joy, and, and what is the central message you hope readers take away from it? Well, hi, John and Will. Congratulations for your program and what you do. Dr. Lambro and I have written four books, and this is the most recent one, and we're not going to be doing any more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. It's, it's, when, when you do it, it's having another child, and I already have one. So talking about Code to Joy, we have limiting life beliefs that block us from succeeding. We have early life events that affect us all the way through our lives, and that's a big issue. We want to identify what they are and then clear them, and that's what Code to Joy is it's tooled to help clear circumstances. Let's do a little uh, grounding for a moment. Let's see which will help the most. Let's go ahead and put the left ankle over the right and the right hand over the left. Interlock the fingers like this. Okay, so... Put your hands together, and we're going to rotate them and just palms together. There you go. Now interlock the fingers like this. Got it? Perfect. Yeah. Now this is a way we're going to do this. It's going to take about two minutes. This will help us to feel more grounded and actually to help some of the little techniques that we'll talk about and do. Just for about two minutes, you can have your eyes open or closed. And so you've got this together. There we go. So, so just close your eyes, tongue to the roof of your mouth as you breathe in, and relax the tongue as you exhale. Tongue up, breathe in, relax the tongue, breathe out. Tongue up, breathe in, relax the tongue, breathe out. Tongue up, breathe in. Relax the tongue, breathe out. Relax the tongue, breathe in. And relax the tongue, breathe out. Go ahead and place one hand on your forehead, one hand on the back of the head, and just feeling grounded and centered. How are you feeling, John and Will? Good. <laughs> was the balancing our, our energy field, right? Is that what we were doing? Right, exactly. 
so that you can think more clearly. You can Love hear it. a smile is bigger. And the jokes, I don't know if they're going to get any better. All right, so what's limiting life beliefs? We want to identify anything that's in our way and correct it. And so we want to limit unpredictable beliefs, clear things from early life, from events, from parents, yeah. from all sorts of things. And we want to clear those traumas that uh, are a separation from how you want to feel. And sometimes that happens with separation from caregivers, from uh, accidents, car accidents, illness, etc. Caregivers, as we develop, might have some uh, parental hostility. They may say something that uh, somebody is bad or aloof, or causing excessive approval seeking, uh, or that we're worthless in some way, and cause anxiety and unfounded fear. We don't want those things. So we want to clear living beliefs. Things that we thought were where we were bad were not. We're going to clear those. And sometimes also we have misunderstood events where a child misinterprets a parent's preoccupation with work and they're upset that their parent is gone for the day. Sometimes both parents are gone from the day. And they may believe that they're alone in the world if their parents are gone during the day. They sometimes feel like they're unlovable and there's something that they're causing, which they're not. So we've got the, the category of believing one is bad in some way or aloof and, and we, we have the misunderstood events. There are seven basic beliefs that get in our way and get imprinted at an early age. Not feeling safe, not feeling worthy, feeling powerless, feeling unlovable, feeling untrusting, feeling damaged in some way and feeling alone in the world. So did you ever feel like that growing up? I was just texting with Will this morning about these very things. After reading your book and reading those seven limiting beliefs, I think there are times I've felt all of those, whether it was growing up as a young child or after my first heartbreak, I started to feel that I couldn't trust anyone and that I didn't feel like I could be loved. My parents are very loving and I applaud their raising of me. They're still alive. And I think they've done a wonderful job. But I think parents inadvertently imprint a feeling of unworthiness on their children for one reason or another, like you mentioned. And there were times when uh, I didn't feel that I was worthy. And, and I think there are still times that I try to validate my existence because of my feeling of unworthiness. So I absolutely feel those, those limiting beliefs. That's, that's a basic one. That can stay with you. You could have something, if your parents are gone and you're thinking, wow, maybe I did something wrong, or I want to come on my parents and I need them now. And so that can get stuck. But remember, there are always tools to clear these things. So that's so we'll and we'll do some today too. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I thought it might be helpful. You have a nice little assessment in the book, your own personal brief assessment, and <laughs> it might be a little challenge, difficult to read these. But I went through as I read the book and checked the ones off that are applicable to me, and each of the seven categories. Okay. So. The first category, I'm not safe. I actually, I did not have any check marks in there. So ding, ding, ding for me, I guess, in that way. Right. And then we get in the category, right. I'm worthless. And the first one, I don't allow myself to pursue a certain skill, career, support, or sport, a hobby, or other activities, even though I know I'm capable of it and enjoy doing them. Another one, I feel I'm fake and don't deserve the respect I have from others, or I'm not as good or worthy as I might appear to be. And then the last one in this category, I often worry about disappointing others. In the category, I'm powerless, I had one, and it's the one I sometimes feel trapped in my job, in my relationships, in my career and life. 
I'm not lovable is a big category for me. I often worry that people that I'm in a love relationship with will stop loving me or find someone else they love more. I don't, I don't deeply believe that I'm capable of having a truly fulfilling, satisfying, loving relationship. I can't believe reading these on air, guys. I sometimes push away the people that I love most, and I can't figure out why. Um, I'm afraid to commit to relationships, even with someone I know I love, because I can't shake the fear that they will eventually betray me or leave me. And the last one in that category, I feel like I have been too damaged by my past for anyone to truly love me. Oh, and just a couple more. And another category, I can't trust anyone. And one in that one, I'm afraid to get close to anyone or really show them my feelings. And there's two more categories. I'm bad. I feel guilty about things I've done in the past. And I have a long pattern of self-sabotage in my life, my relationships, and my health in my life. And I feel like other people are better than I am. I can't shake the feeling that there's something fundamentally wrong with me and that I'm a bad person. And last category, I'm alone and I have, I'm angry at God and angry at myself. So there's a little of a reveal right there of <laughs> what I'm experiencing as I move through those seven welcome, beliefs. And, uh, yeah. welcome, welcome to being human. We all have some elements of this. And actually, such, so much of the imprints are when we're young and we can't really process them. We have the number of neurons in the conscious mind and then the number in the subconscious. The subconscious mind is huge. Conscious mind, tiny, subconscious, huge. So that's, the, that's what happens. We, we push all this stuff down and we drag it around and there are ways to clear this. And that's the nice thing. And what happens when you start clearing these things? They will clear other things too, things that have a similar energy style. For example, of the ones between betrayal or pushing away or lovable or damaged, I think lovable would be a great one for all of us to do for a moment, to get a feel for this. And so let's do this for a moment. About 80% of us are going to have some stuck energy that actually is energy in the body that is disrupted. So let's do something to clear that. And so I want you to tune in to yourself, see what you notice with attention or some of these things that are brought up with what we're working on. So I want you to spin your hand mid chest. You're going to go counterclockwise. You got it. You can go a little more up to the neck. There you go. And you can close your eyes or have your eyes open, whichever you'd like. What, what we're doing when we're rotating this, we're in a process of aligning our energy patterns where we can feel more clear and positive. So, yeah, go ahead and move your hand from the middle chest up to the throat, and it's aligning. We're electrical, just like most electrical devices going all the way up to the neck and down to the middle of the chest and go counterclockwise as though a clock is sitting on the chest facing out. There you go. Perfect. We're just going to meditate with that. It's going to feel more relaxed and calm and centered. No falling asleep, guys. You can't be one. Electrically, we are electrical, and I'll, I'll we'll explain some of the process. Okay. But I, I want them to do that. Okay, that's good. Good. Now we're going to rub the Pledge of Allegiance position. Okay, what we're going to do, you can tap it or rub it. But it might be easier to tap it. It doesn't have to be hard. Just let these words go through you. I'm going to do this and you just absorb it. Love myself, 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 
when you do this regularly, you can probably do it in 20 or 30. So I'll still keep doing it. Love myself, 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 love myself. And I love myself. All right, take a deep breath. Feeling a little calmer. Yeah, definitely more grounded. About Should be about 20%. So this is a simple thing to do that takes very little time and you're going to be more present and clear from that to start with. So the seven, just to go back to what we already talked about, safety, worthlessness, powerlessness, unloyal, being damaged and alone in the world. These are common things that kids and then adults and then uh, can be affected from early effects from what has been told to them or how they're treated at a very young age. And so sometimes when a little example of, let's say, a mom being very controlling and that can really affect a young child because children don't have things to can happen or they can't solve problems so they're trapped they're powerless so and what happens is if there are enough of those kinds of events let's say when they're a teenager or a young adult they don't feel that we're worthy for a raise or a promotion so that's it gets stuck and they're fearful of asking for what you want or people being passive and just really not wanting to do anything. So what we'll do is just follow that code to joy process, identified with what needs to be cleared. We have to repattern and then we anchor it. So I'll, I'll be giving you some examples here. We have the flea and the elephant, which is a good one. The subconscious, we have the subconscious and the conscious mind. Subconscious mind is huge. Conscious mind, very little, very small. So subconscious, it's easy for them to develop limiting beliefs. And that's the flea and the elephant. So the flea, that's the conscious mind, wants to go in one direction the elephant, the subconscious, wants to go in the other direction. So that's where it's going to go. It's not going to go where the flea wants to go. So the subconscious, we want you to become friends with your subconscious. So the unconscious mind is designed to be active and percolating with thoughts and images and memories and all sorts of stuff going on, not having to go in a linear fashion. The, so if you're engaging with a goal, you're going to want to have both. But the conscious mind, tiny, subconscious, huge. We can, just to uh, let you know, we have electrical activity in the brain. We have the EEG, we have EKG of the heart, the EMG of the skeletal. We have uh, effects with the biofield, which is our energy surrounding us. So it's not just our physical self, but it's surrounding us. And we have electrical charges on the top of our head and the soles of our feet. We were doing a little bit of that. And I, I know, go. excuse me, I know in the book, you talk about micro traumas, which you even talk about the fact that most of your clients, when they talk to you about a micro trauma, they're like, oh, this, this probably isn't a big deal. It's not important. But more often than not, even the fact that they're bringing it up shows that it is important to their subconscious, the elephant that you were talking about before. Right. And it is. yeah, I've, I'm a retired Navy SEAL. I've got my own post-traumatic <laughs> stress from the battlefield and, and loss of bodies on the battlefield. But I've addressed that because it was so front of mind. But I'm sure I've got 
many micro traumas along the way. Well, so, I have uh, something that came up for me. So I was, as I was reading this book and like uh, these micro traumas and reading through these seven limiting beliefs and I, and what came to me, and this is definitely stuck with me for quite a while. And it doesn't sound like much, but after reading your book, maybe we could talk about how this has manifested in my life based on admission to my <laughs> limiting beliefs. Yeah, I was as a kid in the 80s. And in the 80s is when like a lot of technology started coming out. And I remember my family and my dad and my mom went out and bought one of those like first little handheld camcorders, not even on the shoulder. It was like a, a smaller one that, that I remember uh, I have a big brother that, that we're about the same age. You're only like a year and a half apart. And it came home and I was like so excited to use uh, this thing because it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a visual display. I can put it on the TV. I can go out and tape stuff on our vacations and stuff like that. And I was really excited to use it. And yeah. I think we went on some sort of vacation and I came back and we went to watch the tape that I, what I had recorded and, and I'm yeah. sitting there myself, my two siblings, my parents, and I were watching what I had recorded. Not like I didn't know any storytelling elements or I didn't know what I was really doing. I was just really experimenting with this piece of technology that really fascinated me at the time. and really like captured my imagination and my spirit. Yeah. And I remember yeah. sitting there as we're watching and they, I was like panning very quickly and they just started being like, oh my God, I feel like I'm sick, like I'm watching this and blah, blah, blah. And I just like, they just started shitting all over my little first little piece of like art, if you will, or just first expression into this kind of format. Well, you look at where you are now. Yeah, I'm standing in front of right. Exactly, I've overcome, I believe, what I've you know that micro trauma. But I just remember feeling, you know, my mom is really good, and she's like, "Oh, hey, Billy, you got to pan slowly." And I was just so embarrassed and so frustrated that we had this camera for years. We'd go on vacations all you know all the time, and I would never pick up that fucking camera because I was just like two things. I was embarrassed, number one, Traumatized. and I was like saying an f. And I was traumatized and I was saying an F you to them because of how they made me feel like months ago in that little moment. And I just, what would have my life have been like if that didn't happen and I was able to use more of that camera? But I just remember it just really hit in a very deep place. And I've seen also that pattern of being, it's like, all right, you don't want me or, or I'm going to be embarrassed and fuck you too. I'm just, I'm going to shut the door and I'm just going to ignore and act like that doesn't even exist in my life anymore. So maybe we can break down that a little bit as a limiting belief or clear it in some okay, way. Let's, but I guess I have. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go ahead and just, we're not going to just on the line. Let's do some things so people can understand a little bit of what's happening. Let's do it right now. So you have, it sounds like you feel that very sharply now, which is a great opportunity for us to do some things. Okay. So I don't need to have you focus on it because you're already focused on it. I'm living in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to punch something right now, Dr. George. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want that. Uh, uh, let's see what we're going to do. So the first thing is would be for people, since we've already done this, simple thing is just doing the simplest, left over right, left foot, right hand over left interlock tongue to the roof of your tongue uh your mouth and then as you breathe in relax the tongue as you breathe out now you don't need that because we've already done that yeah so the next thing we're going to put that whole issue that trauma you're tr just a kid just thrilled with that just fantastic you were just shining brightly and they rained on you and trying to give you corrective behavior when in fact you're just learning you're a kid right. so let's do a little thing and maybe even people that are watching right now maybe pull up an issue that perfect feeling it's not a, a huge trauma but a moderate one like this one. I mean, this was a huge one for you. You were a kid. Teenagers are insecure. Mm -hmm. And you give them encouragement and guidance. And hey, that's great that you're exploring that. That's going to be great for you. Instead of it just it was a result of your father's uh, own, own problems. He right. should have 
correct that he should have strengthened you. But let's just do this. Maybe everybody that is just thinking of not a huge trauma, but a one that bothered you, and let's see if we can make it better right now. In person, we would clear it because we could go in and, and do that. But for right now, let's see if we can do things. Now, you, uh, Navy SEAL, you must have a million to choose from. Uh, so don't pick the biggest. <laughs> no, I've got, uh, I've, got so, a, uh, I've got a micro trauma in my mind. Let's do a simple thing that everybody can do. Put your left, and this is to get you in proper polarity. That's an essence. So just put your left ankle over your right. Extend your arm straight out in front of you. Right hand over the left. Integrate your fingers together. And just close your eyes and just breathe in. As you breathe in, tongue to the roof of your mouth. And then as you exhale, release the tongue. So tongue up, breathe in. Relax the tongue, breathe out. Tongue up, breathe in. Relax the tongue, breathe out. So you're holding in mind the event or the circumstance or the frustration or the annoyance. Keeping that in mind, but tongue up, breathe in. Relax the tongue, breathe out. Just breathing, relaxing, peace of mind. So I'm just continually as I'm breathing here, Dr. George is reliving this experience, the feelings and the experience of it. The um, You could just put it, imagine putting it in a, in a sack okay. that you're holding. Mm. So you don't have to look at it. It's in the sack, but it's going to go adios. Mm. And people are just choosing their own. Now breathe in, relax the tongue, breathe out. Peaceful scene. I'm feeling great. Okay, so here we go. Tapping the spot on the chest that we were just working on. Here we go. Love myself, love my, you're thinking of the target. Love myself, 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 I love myself. I deserve to heal. 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 I deserve to heal, 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 I'm safe, I'm safe, tapping away nice and firmly, be firm, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, and I'm safe. It's possible to heal, it's possible to heal, it's possible to heal, and it's possible to heal. I allow myself to heal. Healing will be great for me and others. Healing will be great for me and others. Healing will be great for me and others. And healing will be great for me and others. Now we're going to tap on the outside of the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Still keeping in mind what the target is. Let's see how I'm doing. Uh, flatten your fingers on the end of the eyebrows. Just tap it away. You can close your eyes if you want. Just tap it away. Nice. Just tap it. Just tap it away. Good. Now we're going to tap under the eyes. Close your eyes. Just and, tap and this it away. Is a, and this is like a clearing sequence or helping me to change my energy? Yeah, right. That's yes, energy. Just energy treatment points. Okay. Since we, we got into a little treatment there, which is good. Just little more interesting than just theory. Good. Now the chin. Okay. Tap in your chin. Again. Balanced, centered, strengthened, inspired, worthy, capable. Good. Now under the arms. This is a very powerful point. It's under the arm. Yep, you got it. Just tap it away. You're going to do it under both arms. So you're going to have to cross your arms. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Just tap it away. Just tap it away. Balanced, centered, strengthened, aligned, inspired, feeling great. Just tap it away. Peace and harmony. Good. Now the end of the ribs. 
at the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Put my right there. Yep. Tap and away. The neuron will either fire or not fire. Good. Now we're going to tap your index fingers together, tapping them together. Tap them like this, nice and firm. Sideways? Okay. Maybe along the side. Yeah, there we go. Good, perfect. Just tap there. Just more balanced, centered, strengthened, aligned, inspired, worthy, capable, sturdy, and strong. Balanced, centered, strengthened. Okay. Now the middle fingers. Now you can give me the middle fingers if you need. You're gonna, you're gonna flo- float them. You're gonna float them like awesome. that. Yeah. Please, you're getting a little some smiles this morning, some laughs. We're always having fun here. This is we've we've never done anything like yeah. this on the show before, Dr. George. So, thank you for bringing a whole new show to us today. Yeah. And my breath while I'm doing this is nice and smooth, or. You know what I mean? Just exactly. Kind of stay that centered, Perfect. balanced, strong. Yeah. Exactly. Living now we're going to go to the little pinkies. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah, you're going to got to float one hand over the top. We're almost done. Great. Yeah. There you go. Just tapping away, balanced, centered, strengthened, shining and, and the- brightly. And those words, Dr. Pratt, are just helping to, it just can, and it wakes up the mind and with the energy. Right. It, is, yeah. right. it just kind of brings it together. Okay, got it. Yeah. The physical now, and the mental. We're, and, now and we're going to, exactly. Now we're going to tap the sides of the hands. Just tapping away. Flint center, strong, shining bright. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Shining bright. Now we're going to, lastly, one hand over the forehead, one hand over the back of the head. Yep. I can't remember the name of this particular hand holding over the head. What is the name of this one, Dr. Pratt? I can't remember. The fancy term is called frontal occipital holding. Okay. Hand over the forehead, hand over the back of the head, and just feel it grounded and centered. It's going to feel very good. Now... How were you feeling about the camera when you were a little kid? It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't like the, the energy of it that I spoke from, or like the ver, ver, veracity, I guess, I, I've spoke with earlier about it. It's not there anymore. I just feel like it's, you know, I mean, I'm not, yes, okay, obviously it was a piece of my past, but it, it doesn't have to. I don't have to replay it in my mind or feel the emotions and, or right. be embarrassed that's, about that's other great. things. Okay. Yeah. That's, I'm just feeling like it's, it's there. Yeah, it's I mean, it, it was there, but it's not there. You know what I mean? Like it is there or it's, it's been not there, there. But so what happens is these sort of electrical impulses interacting with the brain and the physiology, it clears it. So I've had the opportunity to, work on cases where they're just horribly traumatized and it works for that i feel relaxed i I think it's a i think it's a little difficult to do it on camera uh while while we're doing a podcast so it's probably we're probably not getting as much of an effect out of it as we would if we were sitting there in your office with you right Um, right. because there's a little self-conscious backside like people are going to see us doing this tapping and they're going to wonder what the hell we're doing <laughs> side right so i'm sure that interfered with it but i feel balanced but i don't feel that the trauma was necessarily addressed and it was a micro trauma that i've done some work on before but i'm sure if i were to do that in your office where i wasn't feeling self-conscious about being on camera oh yeah for sure <laughs> then it may have yeah been. right that's yeah. funny that you're on camera that's and then you're back. saying right, I can't do this on camera Right, exactly. But yeah, I could see, I mean, I've done some tapping before and it's, uh, it's been tremendously okay. helpful. I didn't do the, the level of tapping that we just did, but it's, it can be tremendously helpful. I know that. So thank you for that. Yeah, the, that for the instant emotional healing, there's got a lot of great stuff. We're talking about assessing our entire lives from when we were 
very young until now. And I know one of the methods that you talked about in the book to identify which micro trauma may be causing the, the biggest challenges in our lives is that the neuromuscular feedback. If you could describe what that neuromuscular feedback method looks like so that people can understand how they may be able to better identify which particular micro trauma is giving them the, the most challenge. Yes. Now, that's a great question, by the way. One of the things that they can do is they can have somebody, first, they would get themselves aligned electrically. So the simplest version, press down on your arm while you're thinking about it, and you can identify these issues by that method. Yeah, let's, with the time we have left, I would love to just, maybe we can just tap briefly into the four step solution to eliminating life's limiting beliefs. And then let's get into like, I really enjoyed reading the five pathways to rich life, like eating consciously, exercising sanely, wrapping yourself in fractals, which John's a big nerd over there in math and would love to talk about fractals and the building a gratitude list and then making time for renewal because we're bringing home that we've done some of our own work here. We've actually practiced some of the techniques, which I really appreciated bringing to the show and like, and actually having like anybody can go home. <laughs> you could could, uh, listening to this could actually benefit from actually doing this work. Um, but let's dive into those four, the four step solutions briefly, and then, you know, talk about those five paths to rich life would be helpful for us, but also listeners out there and just getting a, a little bit deeper into the meat and potatoes of the book. Okay. The four step process, take a nice deep breath. And what happens is, uh, a limited belief serves as a disruption between the subconscious and the conscious minds. Number one, identify your limiting belief. There's lots of ways to do that. You can just think about it. Well, that's bugging me, or I feel blocked about that. And you, and you want to get it as clear as you can. And in the book, there's a personal belief assessment in the mm -hmm. Code to Joy. And for this purpose, so people can go in and, and practice these things. And and when I have a client, I, I work with them uh, identifying the belief. So it's easier and quicker, but it's possible to do it on your own. So that's number one, personal belief assessment. Number two, clearing interference. And that means doing some little structured breathing, physical movement, imagery. We want to just clear anything that's in the, in the way. And so then repatterning is a process to change the limited belief to a correct and productive belief. For example, I'm not safe to I can create safety in my life. That's a good example. And there's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to construct from a negative to a positive belief. Yeah. From I'm not safe, which is a big one, to I can create safety in my life. Mm -hmm. Just that one alone will help you a tremendous amount. Yeah. Or another shift from that, I'm... Uh, I'm worthless to I have value and worthiness. From I'm worthless to I have value and I'm worthy of good outcomes in my life. And then the, the next tool, the final tool, anchoring is the process of ensuring the repattern beliefs that are deep and long lasting. So we want to Let's particularly visualization exercises. Once you're feeling better, you've identified some things, you're feeling much more relaxed, and you see yourself, you close your eyes, and you would see how you want things to be. You would see the way that you want to be. You want to see yourself, the thoughts, feelings, emotions, circumstances, aspects, that you are shining in the way that you want to. And just doing this polarity thing makes an automatic 20% clarity on any issue. It just calms you, it helps you lower your blood pressure, 
it helps you to think more clearly. So that's a good thing. I'm glad you're feeling better. And mm -hmm. congratulations. Uh, you guys do a great job. George, we appreciate it. As we wrap it up, I know you mentioned your website earlier. For those who wanted to learn more about the book or more about you, where can they find you on social media and elsewhere? DrGeorgePratt.com. Perfect. Easy there's enough. A, there's a bunch of stuff. There, there's a bunch of stuff and there's some takeaways too. Perfect. Dr. Pratt, thanks so much for being here with us today. We've done a lot of practices today. <laughs> I'm not sure we even need a, a Lots final of grinding things. practice. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for helping to balance our, our energy, our, our polarity, and uh, we definitely appreciate that. I think maybe I'm experiencing some micro traumas from all my admission of all my seven the <laughs> seven beliefs. So maybe we didn't have to have you back, Dr. George. Or I'm going to step in your office. My actually, my nephew's in La Jolla at the military base out there, oh, there so I'll stop by and say hello. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That'd be great. And I really want to thank your yeah. assistant. your assistant was instrumental in making this happen for us as well. So maybe just do a couple breaths, John, and we can close it out. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, please join us, Dr. George. We're just going to take a couple of breaths just to relax and ground all this information that we received today and all the practices and technique. And we're just going to go really simple. Take a nice inhale through the nose. And then a long, slow exhale out the mouth. Let's do two more of those in. Let it go. And we got one more in. Let that let gut go out. Awesome. Well, Everybody that's listening out there, thank you so much for sticking around. Dr. George, thank you for this wonderful book. I really highly recommend everyone go out and read this book. It was really revelatory to me and also not even just gave me a code to joy, but it really, I think part of getting to the code to joy is realizing the stuff that's getting in the way. And that's not all. We can't get to that joyful place if we don't under, go through that fog of distress, which, which we talked about, alluded to a little bit here. And if you want to dive in and receive more of the wisdom, go to the Code of Joy or check out drpratt.com. And thank you for your time, Dr. George. We really appreciate it. Nice to talk to you. And, Will, you did a great job. And, then John, thank you, too. And thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you, Dr. Pratt. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And <laughs> thank you, Dr. Be Pratt. well and congratulations. Back to okay. you. Thank you, Thank, you for you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you walk away with some new tools and insights to guide you on your life journey. New episodes are being published every week, so please join us again for some meaningful discussion. For more information, please check out mentalkingmindfulness.com.